All right, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a really long time since I uploaded my last video. COVID just kind of took over and now I'm back and hopefully you'll enjoy this next video. Now for today's topic, I'm going to be talking about some of the girly issues that all of us girls face when we're training. So I'm talking about bleeding, being on your period, pregnancy, postpartum, all of that good stuff. So I mean, this happens to a lot of women now that there's more women doing jujitsu all over the world. When I first started jujitsu, uh, about seven or eight years ago, I was four months postpartum. So I had just had a very traumatic birthing experience with my son. You know, jumping into something like jujitsu was something very scary, very new. I felt very awkward. I still hadn't really gotten over the postpartum depression. All of that coupled and then trying to figure out how to stop somebody from choking you can become very overwhelming very fast. So a lot of the information out there on the internet is published by men. Not a bad thing, except, you know, they don't really know what it's like to be a woman. So that's why there's not a whole lot of information out there. Uh, there are a few blogs out there that were published by women, but I thought I'd make a video about it since I couldn't really find a video on this topic. And I know that a lot of women ask these questions on forums and they reach out to other women because there's no videos or information out there on the internet. Disclaimer before we get started, I am not a doctor, so always check with your healthcare provider before doing any kind of strenuous activity. Jiu-jitsu is very intense and if you're carrying a baby or you know if you have hormonal issues or whatever the case is, you always just want to check with your doctor before jumping into anything strenuous. So let's talk about pregnancy and postpartum. Now, obviously, if you find out you're pregnant, don't be doing competition training. You can get really intense really fast. You know, yes, you might have to put your life on hold for a little bit, but that doesn't mean that you can't train at all. If your doctor gives you the go ahead and she says, yep, you're good, you can do some light activity. Drilling with a trusted partner is a really good option. So you're not losing out on your muscle memory. I'll tell you all throughout COVID, I did online virtual training with a grappling dummy. And when I jumped back into actual jujitsu just a few weeks ago, I was able to jump back in no problem. I wasn't gassing out. My cardio was still up. You can get a really good workout with a grappling dummy, or you can just train with a trusted partner who isn't going to go ham on you. And you can just drill different positions or just playing guard or Delaheva, reverse Delaheva, X guard, any kind of open guard is a really good option if you're you're pregnant because then no one's really falling on you and you're not really carrying anyone's weight. Also keep in mind that just because you saw another woman at another club or you saw Mackenzie Dern, right, training while pregnant doesn't mean that every pregnancy is going to be the same and that you would also be able to do that. It's like a snowflake. No two snowflakes are the same. Every one of your pregnancies is going to be different. So just because you saw another woman training while pregnant doesn't mean that's going to be the case for you. So if you are family planning right now, just keep that in mind that you might have some other underlying issues. A lot of health issues do come up in pregnancy, uh, like diabetes, high blood pressure, thyroid issues, and then those can lead to other issues. And then, you know, if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not taking care of your baby. So you always want to make sure that everything is 100% good. And just keep in the back of your mind, yes, you are going to have to make some sacrifices when it comes to your training. Now with postpartum, there are a variety of issues that women usually deal with. Some of the most common ones are breast tenderness, diastasis, recti, bladder dysfunction, bleeding, hair loss. These are probably the most common. So when I first started jujitsu, like I said, I was four months postpartum and I was still breastfeeding my son. I was very tender in that area. So anytime someone was doing, you know, an arm bar from the top or any kind of pressure in that area was extremely painful for me. And I did go on the internet to look for like what to do if you're breastfeeding and you're training jujitsu. I literally found nothing, but a friend of mine that was training with me suggested why don't I wear two sports bras and that actually really helped so if you are breastfeeding or you know you have tenderness during your time of month try wearing two sports bras it really helped me and it just kind of gave you extra support and then when someone was kind of posting on you in that area they're going knee on chest for example it really alleviated a lot of the pressure diastasis recti now this is something that I never actually dealt with or maybe I did I just was so out of it I never really noticed as your uterus stretches during pregnancy your abdominal muscles start to separate and by the end of your pregnancy and after you have your baby they're still separated so you have to do certain exercises to get your abs back together if you don't address this properly with trained professional this can lead to other issues and it can just become really uncomfortable for you as 
you go back to your regular training. So to strengthen those muscles back up so that they can come back together, speak to someone who specializes in postpartum health or postpartum training. There's lots of personal trainers out there that can really help as well as physiotherapists. I don't recommend that you go back to training jujitsu until you fix your abs and you know you have them come back together. So it's really important to strengthen your core back up again with a trained professional. So let's talk about bladder dysfunction. Now this is bound to happen after you have a baby. Every time you cough, sneeze, or laugh really hard, you will have a little bit of urine coming out of you. And this is very common, but does not mean that it's normal. There are different exercises that you can do to address this issue. A lot of women find that pelvic floor exercises can really help with that so that when they are training jujitsu and if someone you know, goes knee on belly on them really hard, you know, are using all of your strength, which you shouldn't be in jujitsu, but if you end up you know, using your strength when you're doing a sweep on someone, it'll be a little bit less uncomfortable for you. So pelvic floor exercises is something that you should consider after having your baby. It can really help. You can also wear special underwear while you train so that if you do have any kind of leakage, it'll still keep you dry and odor free. Products like NYX, Poise, you can find them at any drugstore. So let's talk about postpartum depression. Postpartum depression or PPD is not really addressed in the jiu-jitsu community among women. I haven't found any information or any kind of resources on this topic with respect to BJJ training. Now this particular topic is very emotional for me because I dealt with PPD twice. I had a very traumatic birthing experience with my second and I think I had undiagnosed PTSD just because the experience was so intense. And when I started jujitsu, when my son was four months old, I was still nursing him. I had gotten back into shape at that point. I waited until I was six weeks postpartum, checked with my doctor, everything was great, except still in the back of my mind, I was still silently suffering from the birth. I won't go into detail about what exactly happened, but I didn't really take the time to address it. I just had started jujitsu. It was something new for me. It kind of broke up my routine. And while it, it did give me a high when I was training, it did not help the the depression that I was going through. And so what I should have done, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda, what I should have done is really dealt with the underlying issue because it kind of affected me when I was doing my training. So really important to not look at jujitsu as the solution to your PPD. Try talking to your spouse, your better half, a family member to really start to heal. Everyone goes through things differently. For me, it really did not solve my postpartum depression. Uh, it just kind of put a band-aid on it for a little bit but as soon as I ripped that band-aid off and class was over I was kind of back to where I was so it's just something to keep in mind let's talk about periods now one of the most common questions I get from other women is do you still train when you're on your period or how are you supposed to train when you're on your period isn't it weird doesn't it feel weird what do you do so the short answer is yes ladies you can train while you're on your period for some women it's not really a big deal they just kind of do it if you're someone who experiences intense cramping and like I said to the point where you're throwing up, just take a couple days to yourself. Like you deserve to relax during that time. Don't take that no days off. I mean, yeah, people say that and yes, you should be serious about jujitsu, but if you're not feeling well, you're throwing up in a bucket because the pain is so intense. Just take a couple days off. The mats are not going anywhere. It really isn't gonna do a lot of damage to your training. Everyone experiences things differently. Everyone's hormones are at a different level. So just keep that in mind. So stop comparing yourself to somebody else. And also wanna keep in mind that if you're doing intense training, like BJJ or any kind of cross training, if you do CrossFit or if you run marathons or whatever it is, any kind of intense training can sometimes affect your cycle. So if you're someone who all of a sudden took up jujitsu and you go hiking and doing all this intense activity and you're not getting a whole lot of rest, it can affect your cycle. So just keep that in mind as well. One of the first questions that a doctor always asks is how is your period? Is it normal? Is it regular? So again, you don't want to overtrain either so that it's affecting your monthly cycle because that's an indication of something isn't right. When you're on your period, how are you supposed to train if you have excessive bleeding? Obviously pads, tampons, some women like to wear menstrual cups. So those diva cups that you insert, I've heard women say that it's the best thing that they ever decided to do. If you're worried about leakage, number one, always, always, always have a black gi. Every woman needs 
needs to have a black gi so that when it comes to that time of month, you just wear black gi and you can train. And you know, if you do end up leaking a little bit, it's not a huge deal. The worst thing is to wear a white gi every single day of the year. I don't think any woman does that. I'm pretty sure every woman has a black gi and if they don't, uh, get on it. Well, what are you waiting for? You can also try wearing extra protection underneath your gi. So wearing compression shorts is a good idea. I wear North South underwear. They're the best compression shorts in the world. I swear by them and I am not getting paid to mention their name in this video. I just really, really love their product. And I've tried so many different kinds of compression shorts from really big brands. They were crap because they're not made for grapplers. North South underwear is specifically made for grapplers and I'll leave their link in the description below and you can check them out. Honestly, they're the best investment for your jujitsu training. And even if you're not on your period, they just work well rather than regular underwear. Ladies, you should not be wearing regular underwear. First of all, when you're training jujitsu, you should be wearing compression shorts. Trust me, it makes a world of a difference. You take breaks in class if you need to go and change your pad or your tampon or whatever it is. If you feel like you have a little bit of leakage, you know, run to the bathroom. No one, no one's gonna penalize you for that. And also make sure that you're washing down there. Periods can leave a very unpleasant odor. So just make sure that you're washing down there. Don't rely on toilet paper to keep you clean. By the way, this video is, has taken a very different direction, but it's worth mentioning. We get into positions like North South Kimura and your partner's on the bottom and you haven't washed yourself down there. Your poor partner, I mean, just make sure that you're clean down there so that it's not affecting other people around you. Also, if you need to take medication, just make sure you take it before class, Midol, Advil, whatever it is that you take. That helps you get through the pain. Most academies legally are not allowed. I know for us, we're not allowed to administer any kind of medication to our members. So don't rely on your academy to have medication ready for you. Make sure that you have it so you can take it before class. Also, if you train at a woman-friendly academy, your academy should have have pads in their bathrooms in case you need one and if not just talk to your instructor and if you're up to it and you're not feeling so awkward just ask if they can have that in the bathroom because anyone can forget at any time and when an emergency happens right what are you supposed to do the worst thing is that you have to walk out of the class talk with your academy head and see if they can keep that in the bathroom for you the last topic that i wanted to talk about but i decided against it because i don't have a whole ton of information from my point of view is menopause a lot of women that train jujitsu and are going through the hot flashes the excessive sweating the excessive bleeding and sometimes a lot of cramping it does affect their jujitsu training so i'm actually going to be reaching out to someone who specializes in women's health especially health and fitness with respect to menopause and that will be a separate video on its own because it's such a large topic and pre-menopause symptoms can also occur and you know how do you deal with that when in the middle of your role you you know you start sweating or what have you and everyone's gonna go through it obviously I haven't gone through it yet but it is something I think we should all know about talk about and not be shy about I mean this is part of life um, I don't think we should be shy about it hopefully this video has helped you out uh, leave a comment below if you feel like I missed anything or if there's something that you do so that other women can read it and help them out. We're here to help each other. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I will be releasing videos two days a week. I'm committed to that now. So you guys can catch me in my next video. Bye.